On today's episode of Your Life Redefined, it's been called one of the most important experiments undertaken in our lifetime. My crew and I are off to the Arizona desert for an up-close interview with architectural crystal ball gazer Paolo Soleri. The future never existed, never existed. We are conjecturing, we are hoping, we are wishing, we are working at something that doesn't exist yet, but that's not the future, that's the present that happens tomorrow. Also, we take you on a tour of his eco-community, Arcasanti, and get a glimpse of what the city of tomorrow might look like. So to create a three-dimensional city instead of a two-dimensional suburban sprawl. And later, the sun does work against you here when it's hot, doesn't it? I try my hand at making one of these beautiful ceramic Arcasanti bells. This is how Dr. Andrew is it up. All of this and more on today's edition of Be Your Life Redefined. Dr. Anna Marie, and welcome to Your Life Redefined. You know, for years, one of my dear friends has been telling me about this cool, eco-friendly town located in the Arizona desert between Phoenix and Sedona. What I'm talking about is Arcasanti. Let's check it out. Some people call it the city of bells. Some call it the city of the future so futuristic that in the 70s, Star Wars director George Lucas was inspired by Arcasanti's forward-looking architecture. My name is Soleri, you wear the sun. <laughs> and then you can say everybody was the sun, you included. In Palo Soleri's dream, the sun would warm them, the breeze would cool them, and nature would surround them. The 93-year-old Italian architect is the mastermind behind Arcasanti, an urban laboratory, an experimental town located in the middle of the Arizona desert. Soleri coined the term arcology, which combines architecture and ecology. His goal, to create a community that has as little impact on the environment and agriculture as possible something much needed with today's growing population and demanding world. Nature is extensive. The human is intensive. All organisms are intensive. Living and surviving in an extensive proposition, the, the planet. So that indicates that if we want to have some kind of a progression of our presence on this planet, we have to remind ourselves that we are intensive, we are not extensive. And Scotsdale uh, and Phoenix are example of extension. Uh, you know, there is very little there that can survive. Yeah, in, in physiologically, that's cancer. So do we have a metastasis of the city into the non-city, which is what we are doing now? So the price to pay for that is going to immense. And we are beginning to get a feeling about it now. When you listen to Paolo Soleri speak, it makes you wonder if he was before his time. Matter of fact, in 1976, Newsweek said, as urban architecture, Arcasanti is probably the most important experiment undertaken in our lifetime. Do you remember the moment that you, you had this vision? Oh. I'm not a visionary. Uh, I, was, I was trying to expand my activity in, in, in the field of architecture and environment. So I thought that I would have to try to get some land which was not under the jurisdiction of, uh, of, of the city. And that what was inexpensive enough to be purchased and vast enough to, to be promising in terms of expansion. 
so after a while I, I ended up by choosing this acreage, eight, eight, 840 acres plus 3,000 acres of, uh, of uh, uh, cattle ranching. And so we moved there and the choice was because there was a very, it was very close for the high main highway, 17, had water, had the road coming in, and had power. He had some farmland and it was quite beautiful. And was about 10 degrees cooler than Phoenix. <laughs> And imagine it was these beautiful ceramic and bronze Arcasanti bells that played a crucial role in the building and success of Arcasanti. The bells are handcrafted by talented artists and residents of Arcasanti, all dedicated to Paolo's vision of conserving our planet. Lord, but you know, it's diluted because 60 years, it's a long time. So we have uh, 6,000. Um, what do you call it? Alumni, I think. Or it's 40,000, I don't remember. They're all scattered, so we, we, are, we are in touch somehow with them. Some critics are not kind to Arcasanti. They point to 44 years of work, but with only 10% of the master plan ever being completed. And do you think that we should try to build um, a type of module? But the fact is, the Arcasanti experiment is successful as a teaching laboratory, and the project has captivated the imaginations of a new breed of architects and urban planners. Logan Veer has been living at Arcasanti for the past five months. I, I just think that's Arcosani it is the most honest example of the creative process in a city system that I've ever seen. You know, because we've got a tiny population, but this is weekly, you know, this is my life every week. These three-dimensional conversations, they extend daily. So if you want to be part of that, you know, you should take heed of this place. We are conjecturing, we are hoping, we are wishing, we are working at something that doesn't exist yet, but that's not the future, that's the present that happens tomorrow. Today is the present that is now move, moving into the past. So there's a new present, which is tomorrow, and we are working in that present. When we come back, our interview with visionary architect Paolo Soleri continues. What we accomplish is part of a stream of things which makes for the past. And this stream is life creating itself. Stay tuned. Your life redefined will be right back. Welcome back to Your Life Redefined. We're on location in Cordes Junction, Arizona, and we're here to visit the experimental eco-village called Arcasanti. The urban laboratory is about 70 miles north of Phoenix. Its visionary architect, Paolo Soleri, was green way before it was popular to be green. The concept that the, the city is the intensive present, the human phenomenon, and the land is the extensive question is where we get everything that for survival and development. So to find a, an interface which is positive and constructive so that the urban gains and the, and the, and the agricultural gain together, that's in a way it's an idea that we should pursue. And somehow we are pursuing that but in very, in very capricious ways. But now the land, now, now they say the agriculture is the way to go. Arcasanti demonstrates Soleri's building concept of arcology, which is a fusion of architecture and ecology. The compact three-dimensional self-sustaining unit, which when done would soar 25 stories high and house about 5,000 people, would be a more efficient use of land and resources. Soleri's thinking, by taking the local ecology into account, the negative aspects of urban sprawl, like traffic congestion, soil erosion, and the displacement of native wildlife can be alleviated, if not eliminated. 
we are conservative animals, like all animals, to preserve something that tomorrow is going to be like yesterday. This, this is what our, our dream in a way. So if I buy a house today, I want to be sure that I can occupy it and I can be there maybe for, for my life. So the conservative side of, of us is very powerful. Now the, there is the other side, which is the American side, where where conservatism is is equivalent to to degrading and to death. So we want to have tomorrow to be different from today. Just standing back and taking it all in, Arcasanti is a mystical vision in concrete. To think, since 1970, some 7,000 inspired souls would come and go to help build this innovative city, and it continues today. In your eyes, like, how would you support a community that lives next to the ocean? Funding comes from architecture workshops such as this. A five-week hands-on course is about $1,500, and the selling of books and the Solari-designed windbell sculptures. With so many titles and accomplishments in his life, I had to ask Paolo how, at the age of 93, he'd like to be remembered as an artist, architect, urban designer, or a philosopher. I'm, I'm running after something that might be helpful in general. <laughs> Paolo Soleri was born on the summer solstice of 1919 in Turin, Italy. He received his doctorate in architecture from Torino Polytechnico in 1946. Shortly after graduation, he came to America to work with legendary architect Frank Lloyd Wright in Arizona. Well, when I went to Frank Lloyd Wright, I was a regular architect licensed in Italy. So I was an, um, a study high uh, worshipper of Frank Lloyd Wright, but I love his architecture. So that was the difference between me and most of the apprentices, young and really in awe of this God. That wasn't my position ever because my background was different. Soleri's passion for the ceramic arts ignited when he returned to Italy. In 1950, he was commissioned to design a large ceramics factory. Today, Ceramic Artistica Solomene is an Italian historical landmark. During this time, he started using his ceramic talents to create these beautiful ceramic bells. Later, he started testing his knowledge with other materials. You make an object and then you find out that this object can be translated in different materials. So in, uh, in the bells business, one material is ceramics and the other material is bronze or metal in general. So uh, after a while of, uh, of uh, ceramics, uh, bells, I start testing the bronze bells. And that was about 40 years ago or 50 years ago. In 1956, Soleri and his family returned to the United States and moved to Scottsdale, Arizona. Who would think that over the next 50 years, these bells would serve as the fuel to Soleri's fire to construct a prototype experimental city that was going to test his belief that man could live without destroying his own environment. Arcasanti has been the center of Soleri's life and work. The word retirement doesn't mean anything to you. Is it in your vocabulary? Well, retirement is some kind of a, a, a twist, a, a linguistic twist. You cannot you retire from what? From life? Well, get a nice knife and karakiri. That's retirement. Otherwise, you are just switching from one main activity to a different activity that was sitting there waiting for you. So it's just an, a change of activity. Is there anything left undone that you like to finish? Well, infinity less one. <laughs> this means of, you know, accomplishing something is a nice, it's a nice idea. It helps but it's wishful thinking. I mean, whatever we accomplish is part of a stream of things which makes for the past. And this stream is life creating itself. So let's be part of this creational process and let's not complain constantly. 
For more information about Your Life Redefined, visit our website at rl.tv. Coming up next on Your Life Redefined, we take a tour of Arcasanti and get a glimpse of what it's like to live in this urban laboratory. Driving back into Phoenix, it's almost a reverse culture shock being surrounded by cars. All this and more next on Your Life Redefined. It's now time for some trivia. How much heating and cooling energy can strategically planted trees save? The answer when we come back. Did you figure out our trivia question? Well, the answer is D. The Department of Energy says planting trees and shrubs on the southern and western sides of your home can make your home three to six degrees cooler in the summer and allow more sunlight to enter the windows in the winter. If you're just joining us, we're taking a look today at the life and work of one of the most visionary architects of our time. Paolo Soleri is the mastermind behind Arcasanti, an experimental eco-town that sits about 70 miles north of Phoenix, Arizona. The tone is different and okay. it depends on the size of the bell. We met up with our tour guide outside the gift shop. It's filled with the world famous Arcasanti bells of all shapes and sizes. They range in price from $25 to several thousand. Some bells actually support some great causes in our country. This one's calling my name out. My name is Andrea Speed and I'm a volunteer slash <laughs> public relations coordinator slash resident um, of Arcasani. So everybody here usually has a couple of roles they fulfill and that's what I'm doing. Um, I've been here since the November workshop uh, and decided to stay and volunteer and help contribute to the project. And my plan now is to stay for another year or two and then go back to school for a master's degree in architecture. Now, to become a resident of Arcasanti, you must first complete an intensive five-week workshop that covers topics like planning, construction, and geography. Participants from around the globe come here to learn and even help continue to build Arcasanti. Now, only a sliver of it may be done, but the mission continues. Technically, we're a company town. Um, everybody that lives here also works here in some capacity, either as a volunteer or a paid employee. and. Um, you know, we make the bells to support the architectural project that we're, is ongoing. And our next phase of construction is building a new greenhouse, um, and that's going to supply not only food for the community living here, but also the larger picture idea that the greenhouses will collect heat and then feed that into the buildings um, as a passive heating system. Right now, 80 people call Arcasanti home. I must admit, I felt privileged to be able to walk around the property. It's a remarkable place to visit. So right now we're standing in front of the vaults. Uh, and the South Vault was the first structure to be built here on site back in 1970. Um, so what they did was they cast 12 silt panels um, using a layer of silt in the formwork versus an oil-based product. And then they applied pigment to the silt, which was absorbed by the concrete. Um, and so that's how they got the different colors. It's an event space. Um, we have annual events like Italian Night this weekend. Um, so we'll have between 200 and 300 people seated here uh, for dinner. And, but we use it on a daily basis as well. Uh, we'll meet here during the week for morning meeting before lunch. And people will make announcements. The community council plans events for the residents here and addresses any concerns with the, in the community. The amphitheater, named after Paolo's late wife, Kali, is a perfect spot for outdoor events. Glass front retail spaces surround the top deck of the amphitheater. Now, for now, those spaces serve as a game room for residents and an archive for Soleri's work. Other buildings include the ceramics building, where the ceramic bells are made, and the foundry area for the bronze bells. Arcasanti is not a theme park. It's a functioning community. I spent some time here. I think it's worth the trip. Over the years, celebrities from around the world have found it fascinating. Tours are available, but visitors are welcome to just walk around and experience the vision and architecture. Now, if you really want to experience Arcasanti, stay overnight. Accommodations are available, but it's best to call ahead because rooms are in demand. And try to take a tour because the best thing about Arcasanti is the personal interaction. I think it stays with most people for the rest of their lives. And even now, going driving back into Phoenix, it's almost a reverse culture shock being surrounded by cars again. Arcasante, pretty awesome place. Yeah, come check us out. You gotta tell Paolo that I jumped right in there.
He inspired me. Coming up next, I try my hand at making my very own Arcasanti Bell. Next on Your Life Redefined. For me, a visit to Arcasanti would not have been complete without trying my hands at the art that started it all. I gotta tell Paolo that I jumped right in there. He inspired me. We're in the birthplace of these silk cast bells. The beautiful open air ceramic studio was built between 1971 and 73. Dave Hutchins explains how it was built keeping nature in mind. Huh. It's an apse, of course, which is a quarter sphere, and it's oriented on the Earth's axis so that in the summer months, as you see, and you, maybe you've had this tour already, but um, the sun is high on the axis, and we're in the shade. We're about 15 degrees cooler inside there than we are right here. And in the winter, the angle of the sun is low on the horizon, I think about 33 degrees. And, and it helps warm it. The bells are crafted much in the same way as architect Paolo Soleri's silk cast buildings. Here's our silt, and um, I'm going to just push a form into it. And this silt has not been prepared, so it's slightly dry. But this was Paolo Soleri many years ago out in the desert, pushing some form into the earth and then pouring the slip into the cavity. And the beauty of this material is that it goes from dirt to uh, liquid to this form and transforms from liquid to stone through fire. And it's a wonderful material to work with for that reason. And this is not just any ordinary clay. The clay comes from a fault line that runs through the state of Arizona and it runs through Globe, Arizona, along the rim and through the Grand Canyon. And this material is uh, the resultant uh, process of two tectonic plates that grind together. I'm kind of messy though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> My job today seems simple enough. Remove the excess fluid out of the bells, right? Uh-oh. Well, think again. Clay starts drying as soon as it touches the air. Now add the hot Arizona sun. Not as easy as it looks. That's it. What do you think? Beautiful. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, and I like the detail on the rim. That is nice. You know, we don't do that here. <laughs> That's my trademark. Because it's not easy. Now I want to respect every time that well, I ring one of these uh, bells. There you go. Because a lot of love and talent and passion went into these. Well, a lot of focused uh, energy goes into it all in all. What an amazing place. Matter of fact, every time my Arcasanti bell chimes, my mind goes back there. Definitely put it onto your bucket list. Well, that's all the time we have left. Until next time, remember it's your life, live it, and live it well. Hope to see you next time. For more information about your life redefined, visit our website at rl.tv.